Ahmad is an Egyptian actress and model. Her father is Egyptian and her mother comes from the former Yugoslavia. Tara started her career when she was four years old, appearing in numerous TV commercials, and she started working as a clothing model at the age of 14. In 2014, she was 17, and she participated in the Miss World Beauty Pageant for Teenagers in Brazil, winning Miss Africa and the first runner-up for Miss World for Teens. After high school, Tara began studying business administration at American University in Cairo and pursued acting workshops with actor Ahmad Kamal and online with American organizations. Her first acting experience was in 2011 with the TV series Al Gamal, which means university, directed by Hani Khalifa, in which she acted alongside her young actors, or other young actors. This interview firstly appeared in written form in Moje magazine. I sat down with Ahmad in her hotel room during the October 2020 Alguna Film Festival in Alguna, Egypt to do this interview. We talked fashion, her acting work, the festival, and her charitable work. I've always been interested in biographies and the stories of people's lives. In 10th grade, I read over 30 books of the Kennedy family, not out of obsession, but deep fascination of their commitment to public service. I read so many biographies that I've lost count, and I must say, I get this from my mother. She's always reading biographies. I'm Ali Porti, a fashion journalist and editor of Zayla Magazine. I invite you to sit in on some of my conversations with some pretty inspiring people from around the world on topics of fashion, entertainment, music, and entrepreneurship. Basically, these are conversations from the soulful side of life about topics that will hopefully inspire your life in some way. This podcast is in conjunction with Zayla Magazine, Zayla being the German word for soul. This is the soulful side of life. So, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> um, when did you know that your aha moment that you wanted to be an actress? Um, I guess there was never a moment because the first memory that I have of myself was me acting in front of a mirror and pretending to be someone else and living this character that I had in my head. So, I've always wanted to be uh, in the cinema, in the movies. I wanted to be other people, live other lives. And I always say that I wish I was a doctor, I wish I was a poet, I wish I was so many things. And through acting, I get to be all of these things, mm. which I think is incredible. So I've always wanted to be an actress, honestly. Wow, even when you were modeling. Yeah, it was, I was, I started acting when I was 15. My okay. first role was when I was 15. And I started modeling when I was 14. So okay. they were always in parallel, but I guess I was focused more on modeling and I used to travel a lot, so modeling was more prominent in my life. Um, three, four years ago, I decided that I wanted to focus 100% on acting, invest more in acting workshops uh, around the world, online and in Egypt, and I'm studying, so I really wanted to give acting 100%. Sure. Do you find any similarities between the acting world and the modeling world? Of course. I mean, there's this different part of um, when you're modeling or when you're doing the photo shoot. It, it, it could be slightly different from acting, but what I love about acting is that it lives with you. Mm -hmm. I could do it till no specific age. Mm -hmm. There is not a specific age range that kind of like puts me in a square of these are my modeling years. So the more you become different, the more you grow, the more you change your style, you become a different character and you could really like change yourself for different roles. But modeling for me was limiting to a time range, I guess. So acting lives longer. I see. Um, what character that you've played has been like an empowering force and that has stuck with you? Uh, there's this character that I played in the film uh, Blue Elephant 2. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a drug dealer and she's, uh, not that I want to be a drug <laughs> dealer, but she's a very strong and powerful and very um, 
smart drug dealer woman and uh, she's uh, she's very athletic and she knows her ways mm -hmm. around people she knows she plays music she rides a motorcycle so I think she was very empowering and she kind of gave me a boost to do even more action ro roles later on oh wow yeah that's quite inspiring when you've got a character like I heard Reese Witherspoon say when she has people that come up to her women saying I became a lawyer because of you because of Legally that's Blonde incredible. so when a role even that's a, a fictional character True. inspire someone to become a lawyer True. or I'm sure that if some of your fans were here they would yeah say because the same. she was she was such an incredible strong woman who would not would not let anyone come near her and mm -hmm. she was very I'm trying to find the words to describe it, but I guess she was very true to herself. Mm -hmm. She was a drug dealer, that aside, but on the other side, she was beautiful from the inside and she wanted to protect herself. She wanted to uh, put this image of, I'm not to be messed with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is something that women, uh, it's a good trait to have. Yeah, yeah definitely. Not to be hard up, but to, yeah. Absolutely. Um, it can be hard to break into the acting world, modeling. Um, what advice do you have to aspiring actors who keep going to casting calls, they keep getting rejected, they're feeling hopeless? I was rejected so many times. Mm -hmm. I was rejected more than, time, more than the amount of films and series that I've done in the 10 years that I've been acting. So that's a part of the deal. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the deal that there are going to be so many downs. People are not going to believe in you. People are going to tell you that you're never going to make it. Mm -hmm. Many will let you down and make you feel like this is the end and you should actually quit. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the turning point of do you actually listen to them and quit? Or do you keep pushing forward because you believe that this is what you're meant to be doing? Yeah. So I guess that's the turning point and so many other careers not only acting but when you realize that you're failing you're failing okay what am i doing wrong do i need to step up my game do i need to take more acting workshops do i need to work on myself do i need to study more read more invest more in the way that i deal with the characters that i'm going to audition in maybe travel experiment somewhere else so quitting uh like i i there was a period of six months when I decided I'm not gonna act it was when I was really let down by an mm -hmm. audition and it really got to me and I was it felt like I was defeated because the audition I thought went perfect but the people behind the camera said that I'm never gonna make it and that I should best just leave and never think of acting so mm -hmm. that night I went back home with my mom I cried so hard told her I'm never gonna act again they're absolutely right I've been getting more no's than yeses mm -hmm. so this is not for me mm -hmm. six months passed and my mom asked me what is the one thing that you see yourself doing in 10 years and I was like acting that's the only thing that I could ever see myself doing it's the one thing that I'm truly passionate about that I want to send a message with that I want to be a part of this change this artistic expression that is so incredible and powerful mm -hmm. so she's like fine you got your answer you took a break, but now you realize that this is what you need to be doing and focusing on. There are so many no's that are going to be coming your way, but just keep pushing forward. Yeah, tenacity. Yeah, exactly. We'll get you there. Um, do you have aspirations to go to Hollywood? Of course. Hollywood was always my dream. Since I was a little baby, I always said that I'm going to Hollywood and I'm going to act there. So yes, definitely, and hopefully it's going to be soon. Yeah. Do you feel that if you make it in Hollywood or even the British uh, world of acting that you've made it? Or do you feel now that you've made it, but you hope to to act in... I guess yes. that I haven't been thinking of I've made it kind of sentence because I always like to push uh, a bit further more. So I've made it that I've done a really cool movie. I've made it that I've done really cool TV series I've made it that I've nailed this character that it's been like really hard to you know express and portray but the big I made it statement I guess I'm, I'm not put I'm not laying it out on a specific event in my life that I'm uncertain of so that I'm not just 
focusing on that. I'm just focusing on my growth and I'm focusing on bettering myself each and every single day from the day before. Yeah. So I'm trying to live in this current moment and aspiring to, to tomorrow, to next year, but not really um, having this specific one thing that's going to make it all. I guess the accumulation of everything is going to be uh, success. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, what would you say is well, the Elguna Film Festival is really, in my opinion, four years in, it it, it looks good. Usually it takes uh, a conference or a, con you know, concert series, a festival, whatever, to, I mean, they look like they've been doing this for 20 years. Um, what do you have to say about how the Elguna Film Festival is making an impact in Egypt and then in the Middle East as a whole? Well, <laughs> I believe um, the planning and the investment, the hard work, the mental and physical investment that's put in the Laguna Film Festival is huge. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of support, there's a lot of passion to make this one of the biggest festivals, to make it become what it is today and each and every single festival I realize, because I've come through all four and I've realized that every time they're they're raising the standard even more. They're raising the bar to how it could actually look like, what it could be like, how is it organized, who are the people that come. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I love the fact that it's really leaving a big imprint in Egypt and it's really being heard outside of Egypt. I just got an email from Variety and because uh, I'm on their emailing list, mm -hmm. so they're like, the Wuna Film Festival is making it's uh, is making a big buzz, and that's incredible because yeah. it puts. Iguna on the map mm -hmm. and Egypt it positions it that we could have incredible happenings here mm -hmm. Egypt is one of the most beautiful countries in my opinion and it's so diverse and it has everything from desert to beach to incredible mountains to mm -hmm. amazing landscapes to the buzzing city and now we have this incredible mm -hmm. festival that every single person is very proud of and I guess coming here we celebrate the fact that we can do this and we can do so much more and everyone who came here before is very excited to come the next year to see all the things that are being perfected even more yeah yeah um it's also become a beacon of fashion in the exactly. middle east like i would say the opening ceremony i don't know about the closing ceremony but it's like fashion's night out fashion's big night out for the middle east and it's in Egypt. It's not in exactly. Lebanon, who, you know, the Lebanese, I live in Beirut, so, you know, they like to think they're the yeah. the fashion <laughs> kings, and they are gifted in of couture. Of course they are. But uh, what do you have to say about it being a fashion beacon? In 60s and 50s, Egypt was one of the most uh, fashion-wise prominent countries yeah. in the region. It was booming. Yeah. The style was something to be reckoned with because the country was filled with this sense of gorgeous dresses and beauty. And I guess now it's being revived even more. Mm -hmm. So I guess the Buddha Film Festival helps local designers shine. Mm -hmm. It helps give them the spotlight. It helps helps them create to look forward to something that is of their own mm -hmm. that they could shine in. Many of the people that were on the red carpet yesterday, including me, were local or regional designers. Mm -hmm. Were we so incredibly proud of, happy to wear, and we're wearing it with complete pride because I guess El Guna Film Festival gives this kind of spotlight, like I said, and it highlights those amazing artists, makeup artists, hair, styles, uh, designers, stylists. Mm -hmm. So it just gives everyone the spotlight that they deserve for their hard work. Yeah, that's especially true. in the fashion uh, area. Segment. Yeah, because yeah, film and fashion are really interconnected. Of you can't course. have one without the other. Um, are you doing any charity work? Charity work has like always been a part of uh, a part of my my life. Mm -hmm. My mom instilled this in me since I was a young kid. She always told me when when you're happy and when you feel happiness in your life. Remember that you need to divide that. Mm -hmm. Don't keep it only to yourself. Give to someone who is in need and your happiness will be doubled. By giving, you you instantly get. 
and um, I do charity work related to uh, like a big part of my charity work is related to uh, animals and shelters for animals Sh um, animals are really abused unfortunately in the streets of Cairo and in the streets of Egypt there are many of them and shelters are overloaded they don't have enough uh, money to support all the dogs to help cure all the dogs and the animals horses donkeys camels cats mm. everything so these are one of the things that i'm focusing on uh, something else is um, education mm -hmm. education for uh, children who are underprivileged and don't have the access to proper education because of uh, their remote living or um, if they don't have the finances to, to buy things for their school, to buy the uniform, to buy the books. So I'm a part of several, several charities who support uh, uh, buying clothes and uh, That's amazing. Yeah, just bringing everything that you need for school. Yeah. So yeah, these That's are some beautiful. of the things that I currently support. I'm sure it's more fulfilling than, I mean, of course, acting and modeling is fulfilling, but giving back. I think really giving good. back is incredible and mm -hmm. as a human um, an integral part of your being is to socialize to be around people to receive and also to give so you want to receive love you want to receive attention affection you want to feel significant and you want to feel loved so when you realize that you want these things everyone else wants them around you so for these for those people who don't have the access to feel that they could get a proper education, that they can't get the clothes to attend school, they can't get the books to go to school, I guess it's it humbles you down and makes you realize that we're all one. And there's it's just a matter of chance. It's a matter of will you lend a helping hand if you can? Will you give that helping hand that that person is in dire need for? So Yeah, it makes a difference in the world. Last question, uh, how would you describe your personal style and are there any designers right now at the moment that you can't get enough of? Uh, my personal style has always been as comfortable as it can get, mm -hmm. so I'm, I always opt for comfort. Um, I love wearing dresses and I love wearing, um, I guess I've, I've realized recently that I'm obsessed with day dresses and everything that's fluffy, mm -hmm. but I don't wear them enough. I'm always someone who um, likes to be comfortable and on the go. I'm, I'm a very active person. I like to move around a lot. I drive a lot, so I'm always moving around from one place to another. So I'm always in sneakers and something that is very comfy. And I guess when it comes to, to red carpet and stuff, I, I always prefer elegance. I always prefer chic. Um, I barely. Or I, I don't think I've ever went like in two colors. It's always one color, like especially for dresses and stuff. So I guess that's kind of my style. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's a bit tomboyish when I want to just be extra comfortable and just, you know, lounging. But um, yeah, I guess it's super comfy. Yeah. And what else did you ask? Uh, are there any designers oh, you yeah. can't get enough of? Designers. Local designers, I'll say uh, Dina Shabin. I wore her dress the opening she's one of my favorite designers and there's also Amina K mm -hmm. she's a, I'm wearing this now from her yeah. she has this really cool like go-to collection where you can wear fun pieces um, there's Lebanese designer uh, time I think t-h-y-m and uh, I'm a big fan of Krikor Jabotian I've never like worn his dresses worn his dresses but I love he's very dresses. funny I, I'm obsessed I'm like liking yeah. 700 times each and every single picture so yeah he's yeah. really gifted and it, he has a different style yeah that's very, very true it's so I, I just think it's mesmerizing honestly yeah. yeah well thank you so much I hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode and that you have found a soulful connection to the conversation God bless you, and until the next episode, go bless somebody else.